Hello friends, tonight we're going to take a look at the criminally underrated HKP2000. This is probably the most underrated pistol that I've ever had here on the table. And yeah, I know I say that a lot. I get some sort of interesting uh, non-Glock European hammer-fired pistol and I say, oh, it's, it's so underrated. But this one really is. It's rarely discussed, rarely seen, and almost entirely overlooked. And frankly, yeah, folks are missing out on one of the greatest pistols uh, HK's ever built. So let's take a look at what makes it so awesome. Where did it come from? Well, as the name suggests, it was developed at the turn of the millennia. Uh, it came out in 2001, even though it's called the P2000. Yeah, good job, HK. Uh, it's, and it's obviously based on the USP Compact. But the USP Compact wasn't released that much earlier than the P2000. The Compact debuted in 96, a measly five years before. In gun time, that's not a lot. That's not long at all. But at the time, the handgun world was changing rapidly. It held the whole gun world was changing, and I guess the, the wider world too. There was that whole uh, Y2K business we were also worried about. Hmm. Um, 1913 rails were becoming the norm, and that proprietary HK rail on the USP was uh, less appealing all the time. Um, so the USP Compact got a facelift, and this is what it looks like. But did they improve one of the best pistols ever made? Yeah, I really think they did. Let's take a look at why. Features. The HKP2000 is a compact pistol, a bit smaller than a Glock 19 with a 13 round capacity plus a round in the chamber. This version is the V3, meaning that it's a traditional double action, single action gun with a decocker and no manual safety. My example came with factory night sights, though that isn't standard. These are very light guns. Uh, they come in at 22 ounces versus the 27.2 ounces of the USP Compact. And it takes USP Compact magazines. That's hard to do from across the table. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's labeled uh, P2000 and USP Compact 9x19. So if you already have a bunch of USP Compact magazines, you don't have to buy a pile of new ones. That's really nice. Obviously, the styling is a little bit different than the USP series, even though it does take a lot of, uh, a lot of cues from its predecessors. The grip is the, is the thing that you'll probably notice first. It's a lot slimmer and the texturing is less aggressive. Folks who carry these say that this texturing is a little bit less pokey in their side, so that's good. Uh, the muzzle is also rounded to assist with holstering, and this gun was one of the first to have removable back straps, that uh, modern feature that no one ever uses. And check this out. In 2001, all of the controls were ambidextrous. So, ambidextrous magazine release. You can see that on either side. Ambidextrous slide release. And an ambidextrous uh, decocker, which is, you know, you can just reach it from either side. It's just kind of in a, in a, a central location. Uh, while I've got it flipped over, we also have a, an extractor that functions as a, as a loaded chamber indicator that you can both see and touch. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, when you press on that, a little red a bit of paint is revealed and you can just feel it with your finger. So that's nice. Um, I'd always rather have that than not. You know, you never know if you might need it. This gun also has full-size sights, uh, unlike the smaller sights of the USP Compact. That's a nice feature, I think. I really like that. These are, are excellent sights. Big fan, big fan. Uh, we see that we have a slimmer slide release here. This will make it less likely, especially if you're a tall person, that you will block uh, the, uh, the slide release. I'm sort of, uh, sort of short to medium-sized, uh, but even I have, I have that problem with uh, most other HK pistols, so it's nice to see the, uh, uh, the lower profile one here. I very much like that. So the rest of that stuff is awesome. It's all great, but the star of the show is the decocker. The USP Compact had a safety 
and uh, and a decocker here on the side it made the gun very wide and for me that lever kind of interferes with my shooting it's just the way my hand is shaped it's it's in the way and if i rest my thumb on top of it it's going to accidentally engage it and make the gun do some weird stuff so i'm glad that's that's not here i really like that i like that about the p30 as well to me that is so smart it's genius it's a revelation and every gun should have a decocker like that every gun that's not a beretta i, I love the beretta and safety uh, set up on, on 92s, and yeah, I'm the only one, uh, but man, let me tell you, if you put the G-Kit in your Beretta and convert it to decocker only, that is a fine location. Enough yammering, though, let's take a look inside the gun. So, we'll line up the tab, as you do with an HK, pull the pin out. Yeah, it's it's uh, got the arrangement that you would expect to see. Not a lot of wear. Um, I'm not sure how many rounds I have through this thing. I don't really know. It's not too terribly many though. Not like some of the other guns that we uh, that we have here on the table. But just as you would expect, fit and finish are perfect. Yeah, no no machine marks or anything like that. HK does such a such a good job with their manufacturing. So, I've noticed that this P2000, the assembly and disassembly is easier than some of the other HKs that I have. I don't know why. I've also noticed that inside the fit and finish is better than some of the uh, newer models also. I, I don't know why. I, th those shoot just as well. Don't get me wrong. I love my other HKs. They shoot fine. But this gun, ju it just seems like, uh, I don't know, the, the extra little touches were, uh, uh, were put on this one. They just were doing something special at the factory that day. All right, so which guns compete with this one? Well, look, any of the small double-action, single-action guns like the CZ P07, the SIG uh, P2022, the PX4 Compact from Beretta, and maybe the FNFNS. FNFNS, man, that's hard to say. Um, but this gun is, is sort of in a different size category almost than those other guns. It's at the bottom kind of of that, of that category. It's almost small enough to be something else, but mm, it's, it's still in that category. So, so keep that in mind. Because uh, most of those other guns also have larger magazine capacities. But we'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, besides the Beretta, none of those other guns have triggers that, that compete with this one. There's, they're also, those guns are substantially heavier and, like we said, a little bit larger. Um, none of those other guns also have such a nice decocker, or in the case of the CZ, any decocker at all on some models. Although you can get the P07 duty and choose between either a decocker or a, or a safety. The, uh, the HK has that very polished feel, almost like a custom pistol. The only other pistol on the list that feels that nice is, is the PX4. Beretta does an awesome job with those. That's another very underrated pistol, the PX4 Storm. The PX4, like this one, just these guns feel like they were almost hand-fitted by a master gun maker, and they're 600 bucks. That's, that's crazy. Um, the Sig P220, to me, feels like a cheaper 226. I'm just not a fan. I don't really care for them. But I do love the P07. Like most CZs, they feel awesome, they look awesome, and they just give me the warm fuzzies deep in my, my cold black heart. I would love to have one. Uh, but the HK costs so much more than all these others you're thinking, but uh, not so anymore. Um, following a huge price drop in early 2018, the P2000 can be found for under 600 bucks. I am, uh, I'm dead serious. 600 bucks. Yeah, that is crazy. That's an insane deal. So for that amount of money, you can pick up the Beretta, the CZ, or the HK. For any of those, you're, you're getting an awesome, awesome gun. Either way, you win. The HK is the smallest. The Beretta has the least recoil thanks to the rotating barrel, and the CZ undoubtedly has the cool factor. So whichever of those three you pick, you get a great pistol, but I would recommend just choosing all three if you are so inclined. But why should you choose this particular HK pistol? Well, let's get one HK pistol out of the way first. Uh, the VP9 is a striker-fired pistol. It's much larger and generally a totally different kind of thing. So let's leave that one out of the discussion. 
Uh, first, let's talk about the USP Compact. That's the older version of the P2000, as we know, and it takes the same magazines. The Compact is said to have a better trigger. I agree with that. The reset is shorter and the wall feels a bit firmer. But I don't know. It doesn't really make that much of a difference in my mind because either way, we're talking about uh, polymer guns with polymer triggers, which will never be as good as something like the metal trigger on like a, a Beretta 92, let's say. Now, that's a good double action, single action trigger. We're talking plastic defensive guns. They're just going to kind of be <laughs> good to pretty good. You're not going to you're not going to pick one up and go, man, that's the best trigger I've ever felt. The USP grip is much chunkier and squarish feeling, but you may prefer the more aggressive texturing that it has. Um, but again, that squarishness to me is not quite as comfortable. And uh, that same texturing might be uh, uh, less comfortable digging into your side when you're carrying the gun. Uh, folks that, that carry the P2000s tend to say that the smoothness here feels a little bit better and, and is not quite as, as stabby. Uh, the decocker on the P2000 is is a divine gift and vastly superior to the old lever on the side of the USP. Uh, yeah, it means you can't carry it cocked and locked, but you get a much slimmer gun and you don't have less junk hanging off the side. Uh, and listen, you can learn to shoot that first shot uh, in double action. I have total faith in you. Between us, you can totally figure it out. You'll be able to. Uh, the P30 is the more modern competitor to the P2000, or I should say the newer competitor. And it's bigger, the grip is longer, and maybe a little bit more ergonomic. The P30 grip is, is really, really nice. But the P30 comes with a bunch of bonus shit that the P2000 just doesn't need. Uh, you get this fun uh, trigger trough here. I don't know if you can see that, but that will rub your finger raw uh, during long range sessions. Yeah, that's, that's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, the magazine release is a bit less comfortable despite being larger. The slide release is huge on these, and my grip absolutely blocks that the, the gun from locking open eh, well over half the time, and the P30 has a stunningly awful trigger. The P30's trigger, uh, it almost feels like it's flexible. In fact, let's, let's take a look at that, shall we? Yeah, I almost can feel the, the trigger itself flexing. It's so squishy. Uh, yeah, it's... It's really bad. It feels like I'm, I'm shooting a sponge. It's almost funny how bad it feels. I made, so I made a video <laughs> where I was, I was complaining about how bad the P30 trigger is, and, uh, and uh, I was talking, though, at the same time about how much I love the P30, and, man, people did not like that video. Uh, it's got probably uh, just as many dislikes, if not more, uh, than likes. That's, that's pretty funny. Uh, people really, really were mad that I was saying this trigger sucks, but it really sucks. It absolutely blows. But despite the trigger, I inexplicably love the P30, and I have a strange fixation with this gun. My P30 isn't going anywhere, and I shoot this weird monstrosity proudly. But I will say, the P2000 is a better gun. I will do a full-length comparison between these two guns soon. Uh, but Oh, one more thing I want to show you. Um, the uh, the, the uh, P30 has these removable uh, side panels and stuff, but I don't know. You're probably not going to screw around with any of that stuff. I've never touched it. I don't know anybody who has, so ugh, I, I don't know. Let's get that thing out of the way, shall we? So how does the P2000 feel and shoot? It's just so damn easy to shoot it well. Uh, the grip is the perfect length for my fingers. Look at that. That's awesome. The slide release is in exactly the right spot where my grip doesn't bother it. Yet it's large enough for me to for me to easily activate it. I say as I don't lock the gun open. Yeah, that's great. The paddle magazine release wings are small, but they're very easy to actuate. Uh, but not big enough that you're going to easily activate them by accident, and they feel good to use. That's kind of critical to me that a, that a control on a gun feels satisfying to, to operate. And I, I don't know why I care about that so much, but I do. Uh, the grip is slick, but I don't find that my hand slips uh, when I'm using it. The, the stippling on the front and the back really helps. It really does. It's, it's not particularly aggressive, but it, it just feels nice and it does its job. It's really great. I adore the size of this gun. It's just right. It's not too thick, but you still have plenty to grab. It's not too big. It's not too small. And the location of this decocker, 
Oh, man, that's so smart. Whoever thought of that is truly a very, very smart person. Very smart. Let's take a look at this trigger. The double action pull is long and heavy, as you want it to be. It's your safety on the gun. But the pull is very smooth and consistent. You can shoot the first double action shot very well with a little practice. Yeah. So when we're firing the gun in single action mode, the take up is very smooth and light. No weird creaky stuff. Then you meet the wall and you can push back the resistance a little bit. Um, the flexibility of the wall is, is part small amount of creep and part a tiny bit of trigger flex. Even though the trigger on these is a lot harder than the triggers on the P30, or at least it feels that way, there's still just a tiny bit of flex because it, it's still plastic. With a plastic trigger, it's just you're really asking how much flex is there. Then you break through the wall and you're rewarded with a crisp, clean snap. Once more. The reset is long. It's probably too long. HK likes a long reset on its newer guns, like the P30, which feels like it, it has a worse reset. But you get used to it. Um, I've been shooting HKs consistently for a few years, and it's no longer an impediment if it ever was one. And if look, if you're, if you're used to shooting mostly double action, single action guns, you're used to longer resets. Not this long, probably, uh, but longer than striker fired guns. You'll just get used to it. You'll adjust. And you get that really crisp single action snap there that helps. Uh, the the trade-off is, is probably worth it, although I would like for it to be better. Recoil from the gun is very manageable, and it's very easy to shoot well. The controls are satisfying from the trigger to the mag release to the decocker. Um, the pistol is superbly fit, as you saw when we took it apart. The slide feels very slick as it moves on the rails. Now, I do wish there were front slide serrations. Well, let's do it this way, shall we? I don't know if that smoothness is coming through, but it's, it's really slick, even for an HK. And this is not a particularly well-used gun uh, compared to some of my others. This gun is very reliable. I haven't focused on that much as HKs in my experience are always reliable. Everybody makes a lemon every now and again, but if you buy an HK, you're buying an excellent pistol. I've actually never experienced a malfunction from an HK pistol in all the thousands of rounds that I've shot through them. This thing, though, it's only got like 500 rounds through it, so I don't want to sit here and say, oh, this is the most reliable gun I've ever owned. Not because it's had a problem, but because I just haven't shot it enough. But uh, as is traditional, I'll do update videos where I say how it's doing as time goes on. But I really don't expect that I'll have anything to say other than this thing ran flawlessly. What would I change about the P2000? Well, I wish the magazine held more than 13 rounds. HK has long prized magazine reliability over capacity, or at least that's the general excuse for uh, the lack of, of capacity. I, look, I trust HK to make a reliable 15 round magazine that fits inside this grip. They can totally do it. But look, if it only holds 13 rounds, it only holds 13 rounds. The gun is so nice, I'll get over it. It's okay. Sometimes I wish the magazine release was larger, but that would make it more prone to accidental activation. Sometimes I wish this gun had the P30 grip style, but then that would make the grip larger. Sometimes I wish it had front slide serrations, but that would make it uglier. There would be a trade-off for any of the changes here. This is a very nice gun as it is. It would be nice if it had the same trigger feel as the USP Compact, but I've been told that the different trigger pull is related to that rear decocker, which I'm not willing to sacrifice, so let's leave the damn trigger alone and enjoy a very slim pistol with no extraneous garbage and uh, weird extra buttons and slidey bits and all kinds of different stuff. Final thoughts. I wish that I'd bought this gun sooner. Uh, the urge to own the latest in gun technology pushed me to buy the P30 instead of this hidden gem, which I felt at the gun store and knew that I loved, but I bought the P30 anyway. Yeah. So, though I love my P30 and treasure it, I like this gun more. If you're looking for a small gun for home defense or for carry, this is a great choice. And no longer can we complain about the price of this pistol. At $600 or less, you're getting a crazy deal. This was a fine gun when the P2000s were a grand. At this price, you need to at least go to the range and try one out. You will definitely like it. This is absolutely worth $600. <laughs> That's such a good deal. 
This gun gets it all right, and no one's really talking about it. You can be the first to own this nearly 20-year-old design that's still as relevant and super cool as it was the year after your neighbor was hoarding ramen and bottled water uh, in case Windows 98 took the eternal dump uh, when the clock <laughs> struck midnight of the year 2000, uh, locking him out of Quake 3 forever. Those were the days. Those were the days indeed. Everybody had that neighbor. Um, if you didn't, I guess that means you were that neighbor. But really, uh, looking at it, can you believe this pistol is that old? I mean, my God, it could have been announced this year. It has an Ambi Magazine release, Ambi Slide release, Ambi Decocker, removable back straps, and this front texturing here that lets you shoot it all 80s style like that nothing fancy man. Uh, put some slide serrations on it here on the front, and, and you've got yourself a, a modern pistol. But really, this is my favorite HK. I love this thing. It's so awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you all soon. Good night. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Thanks for watching my terrible video. We laughed a lot, we learned a lot, we hugged a lot, and maybe made some new friends. If you enjoyed the video, learned something, or simply thought that I was a weird guy and would like to see more, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you soon. Good night.